<laughs> oh, guys. I woke up this morning and I was chilly. So I went and kicked on the heater and it just kept coming up with with a fuel error, HO3 or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? So I tried again and I tried again and I tried again. Still keeps coming up with that damn error. One hundred and sixty-eight bucks. <laughs> it kept coming up with a error, error, error. I'm like, what the hell? And yeah, well, I just about ran out of gas this morning. <laughs> what a what a great way to start the day. Oh, look at that sunrise, Cruzy. Good morning. Damn. I knew 160 bucks for a full tank so was too good to be true. It's only at three quarters of a tank. Dude, that's all Timbits. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Crazy got some Timbits, buddy. Hey, you get spoiled rotten, crazy. If you wonder what a Timbit is, it's just a round donut hole. That's it, just two. That's the heater error code I got this morning when I tried to turn the heater on. Usually after you've hit a code a few times, it'll take you a, a couple of tries to prime this thing. You hear it? <laughs> the ticking? That's the fuel pump back there. It's pretty loud because it's probably lost prime. Yep, got the error code again. Got the heater back going and all primed up. I let it run for a half an hour, but now the van's way too hot, so we're sucking, just sucking some of this stuff out of here. This new one shuts afterwards. And I don't like that it's shut, so when after it's done, we, we uh, push this button and it opens up the lid. I prefer the lid open on this thing all the time because it gives a nice exchange of air. Like if wind is going out there, it actually pushes wind in here every once in a while. It's kind of nice. So now that the heater is all back to normal, let's talk about fuel. So I haven't made a video like this. I think I made one in my first year of my van life. What up all you weirdos? Today we're going to do a video on how much van life has cost me in this past month. This whole month I've taken a bit of time and tried to track down as best I could everything that I have spent. The only thing I'm not going to include in this list for you is some of the things I've bought for the van like my buddy heater, some of the LED lights, that I didn't throw into this list because, you know, we're all gonna buy things as we go. So I'm not gonna include that in the monthly cost. So let's just break it down good and easy. Keep in mind, when it comes to some of this stuff, what you're gonna spend is gonna be way different than what I spend. Of course, my biggest cost is gonna be gas. I'm not the type of person that likes to sit parked in one place and I see a lot of van dwellers in Vancouver where I live that kind of stay put in the same areas all the time. I'm not that person. I like to get out there and explore and do things and go places and just kind of follow my, wherever my mind wants to go, that's where I go. So in the last four weeks, and that's what I've based this on is four weeks, I have spent $380 on gas. Of course, if you're gonna be driving something a little bit easier on gas, like a minivan, your gas is probably gonna be half of what I spend on mine. So gas has been $380 so far this month. I have found amazing ways to save money and also cut back some things that I never thought I would ever cut back. So let's talk about it. When I first got into van life, you know, of course, you're still kind of transitioning from paying super high rent and having all the luxuries of like, the old life you used to have so things are always going to be more expensive your first month in and gas my gas bill right now is costing me between 400 and 600 dollars a month yep 
I don't know if you know, but gas in Canada is super, super expensive. Anyway, gas prices out here are currently right now about $1.40 per liter. What are you, what are you chewing on? You are so funny. What are you chewing on? It's in your mouth. Something's in there. What's in there? What do you got? I don't see anything. Don't eat me. All right, guys. Sorry, Cruz. We're going to move the camera. Is that okay? God, you're so cute, bro. <laughs> Cruz, Cruz was eating a part of it. So this is what we're going to talk about today. My fuel video. I made notes. Cruz decided to eat my notes. Wrap your head around that. $3,700 in three and a half months. 109 days. So when I made that previous video, letting you guys know that traveling like this is insane and this is where my example before that some people just never really understood like I always told people travel slow because it's cheaper some people like that doesn't make any sense chrome if you're gonna go to that destination anyway it's still gonna cost you the same amount of money yeah you're right but if you did that drive in one week or did that drive in one month right sure you're going to spend the same amount of money but your monthly budgets are going to be very expensive so take my trip for example the three thousand seven hundred and seventy one dollars in fuel in 109 days if i drove that same route and did the exact same amount of kilometers but i did it over 365 days my monthly would be way cheaper and that's where things come in come in for people like me and maybe most of you that have budgets. You're gonna be shocked. In the last 365 days, I spent $16,500 in fuel. Now that we have a new bookkeeper, she's starting to track things for me on the number side so next year i'll be able to give you guys a better breakdown on my entire van life when it comes to the van itself what i spent on <clears throat> maintenance and oil changes and mechanical repairs and fuel and then she's going to break it down too so if i'm traveling we can find out how much that travel trip cost me between certain months um i'm feeling pretty lucky that i have an accountant that's uh a subscriber of the channel so we can start breaking this stuff down better for you guys um, as the years move forward in my van life but last year sixteen thousand five hundred dollars is what i spent on fuel some people spend that on rent in an apartment out here i could rent probably a shady little apartment for the same price so that works out to one thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars per month 1,375 bucks is round about what I was paying for rent in my apartment before I moved into my van. Making my current van life right now for the travel side of things um, the same cost as my old life for rent. I look at things a little different though because if I was back paying my rent in that very same apartment, for one, the rent would be way higher than it is right now but i wouldn't have had the memories the traveling around the movement the excitement of sleeping in different places and you know it's just van life offers a lot to me personally that my old apartment could never offer me so out of that scenario i don't spend money to sleep at night and that's what that was i used my apartment to eat sleep and whatever else i needed to do before i left it for the entire day i spent more time out of my apartment than I spent in my apartment. So trying to rationalize spending this much money on fuel really comes down to this van life offers me a lot of memories, a lot of experiences, a lot of learning and being in new places, keeping the mind fresh all the time um, for the same cost as I was spending in my, in my previous life. So the reason why I figured it's probably a good idea to bring up this subject with you guys is so you all know that van life isn't always affordable. You can adjust how much things cost in your, you know, based on your budgets. 
um, by the amount of driving and traveling that you do. If you need to ease up on what you spend that month, you just simply don't drive around as much that month. Keep that in mind when you're when you're when you're getting into this van life journey. Is that it can be as cheap as you need and as expensive as regular traditional life that that people would normally live in a city. It can be on either side of the spectrum. And that's the great thing about it is that you can live on the higher side of van life or you can live on the budget side of van life, whatever you choose. You could be in a really expensive sprinter van and do piles of traveling, or you could be in a in a budget old school van and barely moving and just doing it on the cheap. So there's different levels of this lifestyle for sure. I myself have been on the very cheap side. When I started in this very van, had no money I couldn't afford to move around too too much majority of the moving around that I was doing was for uh, you know to go to places to make to make videos and uh, to go to places to DJ and stuff that was a majority of my movement at the beginning otherwise I tried to sit still in a park during the day to ease up on the <laughs> on the biggest expense in van life and that is always fuel so besides buying your van fuel is your number one cost in this lifestyle it's not food it's hopefully not maintenance fingers crossed to that one it's fuel and i look at getting fuel as me paying rent so last year was also the most expensive we've ever paid in the lifetime of me being in my in, 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 pretty much in my entire lifetime last year was the most expensive fuel that we have ever seen here in canada i'm pretty sure it was the same there for you guys and this year it's starting to be the same it's going up now that summer's here i think gas here was a dollar 99.9 per liter but i know we have a big audience on here that does a lot of travel whether it be on the weekends in your camper vans or you're taking off on a on a summer trip or if you're going down south for the winter and you're taking your camper van just so you guys know that if you move around a lot you could spend like me one thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars on fuel so for everybody watching in the USA, let's convert that into American money for you. What is $1,375 CAD in USD? $1,375 is 1,040 US dollars and one cent. So that's $1,000 a month US is what I am paying for fuel in my vehicle. So in Canada, that's a lot more, our, our, our money's not worth anyway, long story short. So. US, I'm spending $1,000 a month. So for that, that's 12,000 a year. For us here, that's 16,500 a year. That's a big difference, think about that. 12,000 to 16,000, so yeah. If I was in the US, that's 12,000 a year in fuel. Still a nice big chunk of money. So if you're out there looking at getting into a van and you wanna do as much traveling as we do here on this channel, you can expect to pay $1,000 a month. And that also varies on vehicle so when i was traveling with emily we were doing the same amount of kilometers doing the same amount of driving maybe an occasional opposite run to a grocery store to get coffee or something like that that we were doing different but while her and i were traveling together we both have ford econoline vans we both have the same engines in our vans both of us and because my van is lifted with bigger tires, it's heavier, it's got a heavier build on the inside. Um, you know, my, my suspension kit, my winch, everything on my roof rack system, my van is substantially heavier than hers. So every time we got fuel, I was paying 25 to 30% more every fill up than she was. So if she was putting in a hundred bucks, I was usually putting my 125 to $130 in fuel every single time on average the entire trip so keep that in factor too so when you're trying to think well well a thousand bucks us is a lot of money in fuel well if you had a smaller van that fuel bill may be 30 percent less than that with all that travel we did a lot of travel you know and think about that like imagine if i was renting an apartment and i wanted to do a road trip as well I'd not only have to pay rent at my apartment that I wasn't at while I was on the road for a few months, I'd also have to pay for all that fuel on top of that. So me having the ability to live in the van on a full-time basis, 
allows me to do those trips without having to pay rent at a home I'm not at, you know? So it's, th there's a lot of tipping factors. And, you know, I just thought I'd let you guys know this stuff because, you know, I don't want people to get out there and hit the road and not realize that, oh, I thought maybe this trip might cost me 500 bucks. And when you realize it's actually costing you a thousand US or 1300 Canadian to do trips like that. So just a little heads up for you guys. Not a bad thing. I don't see that as a bad thing at all because if I want to save money, I just travel less. It's really honestly as simple as that. And I got a feeling that when we do this video next year, because now that we have the bookkeeper giving me all these numbers and stuff, it allows me to make more informational videos surrounding the financial sides to my personal van life that I never had the chance to do before. So it should be able to break down my cost of groceries, my cost of Tim Hortons, my cost, which is probably insane, but be able to break all that stuff down for you. So maybe next year I can make a video saying, hey guys, my travel season cost me this for groceries, this for fuel, this for maintenance, and this for dining and eating out and entertainment, you know, which would be cool. Like, you know, to know I was on the road for six months and I spent a thousand dollars getting into places like, I don't know, movies or, or a zoo or whatever we get into. It's kind of be fun to break things down for you guys on the real financial side because I've never been one to really keep track of that stuff. I go into places if I want to go into places if I can afford it and it's not too expensive. You know, we go to places sometimes and you get in there and I'm like, you want 65 bucks for me to get into that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no thanks. Um, but yeah, guys, so if little things like this kind of help you guys out, let me know because I have a pile of information when it comes to van life to offer you. I got years of knowledge of living in my van and experiences that I can share with you guys. My travel season starting soon, which means the heavy gas bills are starting soon. Um, so on the last video, I told you guys that I had a dentist appointment on the 19th and we were leaving on the 20th or 21st and that has all changed. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So the, right after I filmed the video yesterday, um, the, I, the dentist called me and said, Hey, we have to cancel your appointment. I'm like, what do you mean you have to cancel my appointment? They're like, your crowns aren't in from the lab yet. I'm like, oh no, when are they gonna be in? They said, after the 21st. They don't know when, they just know it's after the 21st. So I won't be able to leave until those crowns come in and they can get that crown put on my tooth and fix up the bottom tooth. So my summer travels are delayed, hopefully not longer than another week because I've been ready to go for months. So fingers crossed that all gets dealt with soon. And you guys remember that Ziploc bag I showed you with my temporary crown that fell off? Well, <laughs> it's on my tooth and it's stuck on there really well. The dentist is like, put some toothpaste in there, let it just about dry, let it sit there for a while, then shove it on there. And I'm like, there's no way that's gonna work. I'm gonna choke on this thing sleeping last night. No, I even floss the tooth. <laughs> no, that toothpaste held on that cap like a champ all right guys thanks for watching i've had enough babbling here for the evening i'm gonna go turn this fan on because it's i shouldn't have i shouldn't have primed that heater <laughs> it got it got smoking hot in here and uh i love having the remote on the on the fan it's it's pretty dope all right guys uh, enjoy your travels and i'll uh, catch up with you guys on another one three two one